Hello YouTube, Denver Coder here. For my first video, I wanted to run through a setup tutorial for setting up a new Mac for development. Um, so here is the GitHub page. And this is a pretty lengthy tutorial. Um, every time I reboot my or reinstall my operating system on my MacBook, I run through this. Um, it's a lengthy tutorial, but it's a good tutorial. Um, and I know that I don't have problems getting through it, but I've gone through this probably 20 times. So I figured I would run through um, and try to do it live that way anybody that gets stuck can get some help um, so it's probably going to be a long video I'm going to try to make it maybe into three parts so um, we'll see how it goes alright so for the first part system update obviously you want to make sure that your operating system is up to date um, so on a Mac just click on the Apple. Um, it'll say in here um, software update if there is one. So mine's already up to date. There was actually an update to El Capitan a couple days ago, I think. So good there. Now the system preferences. Um, this is kind of an optional figure uh, feature. I like to do this just because it's nice. Um, so basically you want to open your system preferences and the trackpad you just want to check this tap to click uh, I don't ever use my trackpad so it um, doesn't really matter um, and then for the keyboard you're going to want to set your key repeat all the way to fast and your delay until repeat all the way to short show you a good reason for that say you're writing a long line of code you need to delete it if you have it set up so that it's the fastest and it actually moves pretty fast anytime a key repeats it repeats fast so that's what that's for um, and then the dock. So one of the things with most computers is that you really need a lot more vertical space than you need horizontal space. Uh, a lot of times you know you're working on a web page or something, you're scrolling up and down. So this vertical space is really valuable. So most developers that I know, they have it either on the left or right. Because you'll see um, when you put it on the left it's kinda like just in the perfect spot to grab stuff I mean if you're going up into the, and I know you guys can't see this I've actually got my dock on my other screen um, hold on let me change that real quick uh, let's see where is it um, I think if you just drag that over oh Oh, that didn't work. Anyways, crazy, right? Okay. So, anyways, you want to have your dock on the left or the right, just because you've you see I've got this document open and got a little bit of space on the side here that'd be the perfect spot for the dock um, the next thing you want to do is again this is a personal preference I like Google Chrome I'm a developer I use Google Chrome every day so one of the first things I do whether I'm you know refreshing the operating system on a Windows computer or a Mac is the I download Chrome pretty much right off the bat so it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, now on to the fun stuff. Um, you're gonna spending a lot of time in the command line on a Mac, um, even more so than on a Windows computer. I find that on my Mac I use it a lot. 
Um, so what we've got is there's a program called iTerm2. And all of these, um, these are all linked to the website you would go to to get it. So there's iTerm2. Um, so yeah, basically, this is what it looks like with all the modifications, everything said and done. I just didn't want to undo everything on my computer and run through this tutorial um, since I have my computer set up the way I want to. But normally this would just be a black screen. Um, this text would just be this gray color up here. Um, you wouldn't have the fancy colors. And you'll see how you've got dev is the user. That's my username. MacBook Pro is the computer name. And then this little tilde right here, that is actually your, it's like a alias for your home folder. So if I look at my folders, I've got, say, the pictures. If I CD into pictures, you can see that the it tells you which uh, folder that you're in. Um, and a really cool thing is that if you are in a Git repository, so uh, let's see. So I'm in an empty directory. Let me just uh, so I've got an index HTML file. If I init this, do a git init. Now you can see it tells me I'm on the master branch. And if I do a do a git status, everything is colored really nicely. Like this index file hasn't been added yet, so so now you can see it's been added. New file, it's yellow. So and then I can go. Everything is good. So, anyways, that's kind of cool. It's kind of a neat feature. Uh, anyways, back to the iTerm2 setup. So, what you want to do is you want to go to this link. You want to install it. Like I said, when you open it, it'll just be a black screen. Um, there's a couple quick settings they've got in here. Um, they've actually got. go into the preferences and then uh, under the tab general right here uncheck confirm closing multiple sessions and confirm quit iterm2 command under section closing so these two will be checked you just want to uncheck those because it's a real pain in the butt because every time you go to close this window it asks you to confirm if you want to close multiple sessions and then when you quit it asks if you want to con confirm that you want to quit it's just a pain in the butt so uncheck those and then we're going down to profiles so then you're gonna to go to profiles you're gonna create a new profile I'll show you how to do that real quick just create a new profile call it whatever you want um, and then you see it's there and now you go into other actions and then you go to set as default so actually now I can and anytime you make a change in iTerm2 you have to close the window and then reopen it um, I think if you hit command T it'll do the same thing but anyways it's uh, so then you've got a new profile this is set as test so you can have different settings like if you want to have a setting for um, development you want to have a different setting for writing shell scripts or just whatever you know you could have as many of these as you need um, and then of course to delete you just well let me make this the default first um, and then I can actually delete that okay um, so blah, blah 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 select other action set as default and then finally under the section window change the size to something better um, so if you go to window when this window opens up I think this is originally set at 85 and 25 so it opens a really small window and you have to sit there and drag it open to a better size anyway. So 
we just set this to 125 over 35. It's just personal preference, whatever you want to do. Okay, now onto the fun console stuff. Let's see here. Oh, and this this is an app called Moom, M-O-O-M. It's really cool. It just runs totally in the background. There isn't even a bar or anything in the menu bar. It just runs faceless. And what it is basically is you hover over your resize icon and it gives you a choice of either being full screen. Um, you can go to the left, dock to the left. Oops. You can dock to the right. Oops. Um, it's really cool just because this is something that you can do in Windows. It's just something that's not built in natively to OS X. So it's kind of nice. Like you can see, I've got these two windows. A lot of times when you're doing development work, you've got, you know, um, you've got a code window open here and you've got a code window open here. You know, maybe you've got two different applications open. Um, you could have your website here and your code here and your, you know, writing code and then it's refreshing in the browser and stuff. So it's pretty neat. Um, so now it looks like this isn't going to wrap. So let me just open this so we can read all of it. And I'm really sorry this is amateur hour. This is like my first time recording a video for YouTube and it's my first time actually doing a screen recording. So it might be a little crappy, but I'll get better, I promise. Um, so now you're gonna install Homebrew. Um, I really like Homebrew on my Mac. It's just a really easy way to get all my dependencies installed, get everything set up. Um, so what you do is you, you need to have Xcode installed. Um, it used to be back in the day you had to go to Launchpad, you had to open up the App Store you had to go and install Xcode through the App Store and I mean it was like a 2.4 gigabyte file so it was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, now there's a way you can actually just do it from the command line um, and I believe they've got that right here. So if you're running OS X, Mavericks or newer then just right here from the terminal you can type in xcode dash select dash dash install um, and then basically what it'll do is it'll say that in order to run that command xcode command line tools needs to be installed and would you like to install them now and you just hit I think type Y and it does it I don't know if I can actually since I already have xcode installed Yeah, see, so command line tools are already installed. Use software update to install updates. So hitting that, it would actually ask you if you wanted to install the tools. So the next thing you want to do is uh, finally we can install Homebrew in the terminal, paste the following line without the dollar sign. So you'll see there's a lot of lines of code in here. Um, you can type them out if you want. Um, a lot of these really hairy lines like this one I usually just cut and paste, but you want to leave the dollar sign off. Um, that's just, he's just saying that that's a terminal prompt. Um, and then you'll just paste that in. Copy it first. Hit enter. So of course Again, I said it's already installed, so um, a lot of these commands are what they call item potent, which means you can run them over and over again. So if I want to, you know, this this next command that we've got down here, um, you need to tell the system to use programs installed by Homebrew. Um, so you have a path file or a path variable um, you're just changing adding to that so that um, this line right here just adds local or user local bin to your path and then stores it in a file called dot bash profile um, Mac uses a lot of dot files um, let's see 
you look at your hidden files, so I know this is hard to see, but so all of these right here are dot files, they just they start with a dot. And they're normally hidden by the system. Um, I have a little neat little trick I'll show you guys later to hide and show files on a Mac. It's not like with Windows where you just select something. I have some aliases set up. So if I type hide files, oops, hide files, you'll see that now all my files are hidden. If I type show files, then they're all shown. And I'll show you how to set up aliases when we get to that point. Um, and now, let me take this opportunity to say that this setup is, I'm, I'm doing this video for what would be a complete beginner. I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh my God, come on, let's go, you know, uh, we know how to do all this already, but I just wanna walk through this step by step and make sure that anybody who's like brand new to Mac or brand new to development can follow along. So, so we just installed, we just installed Homebrew. Uh, we just added a path to our path variable. Now we're gonna type brew doctor. This just basically is a way for you to find out if any dependencies are out of date or if you can see down here your homebrew is outdated. You haven't updated for at least 24 hours. This is a long time. In brew land to update homebrew, run brew update. So you can see that's one of our next steps we're doing here. Um, you see you've got, if you want to install a package, brew install and then you just type the package name. Um, so. If you wanted to install node, you would just type brew install node. And now we're to um, update. So brew update. And uh, you'll see another cool thing with this iTerm setup here in a second, I think. Um, see okay let's just run it again okay so already up to date so that brew update that's an it's an example of what I was talking about about an item potent command I can run this as many times as I want over and over again over the top of itself and it's not gonna do anything it's not gonna hurt anything it's just gonna either update or it's gonna tell you that everything's updated um, so here's a I've never actually had this happen um, this tutorial is I think a couple years old uh, let's see four years ago was the last time that it was actually changed I don't know when the last time it was updated but um, I, I haven't had any problems he does put a lot of stuff in here about like you know oh, I've seen this happen and I've seen this happen and I've never seen any of these happen so I'm assuming they're fixed, but if you ever see a command fail because of a bug, or I've seen that command fail because of a bug, if that ever happens, run the following when you have git installed. Um, so, um, and actually this right here, um, I do have a problem with git when I ran through this process where if I do a git push, it tells me that there's two upstream branches, um, which I don't, I only have one. Um, so I actually just do something similar to this to fix that. So then um, to see if any of your packages need to be updated. So the clear command just clears out your window. So it looks like git node and SQLite are outdated. So I can go, if you look at this next line, to update a package brew update uh, get uh. huh. 
I've actually never upgraded. Oh, upgrade. Sorry. Okay, and then we'll do node. This might take a little while. Okay. And then MySQL, oops. What did it say? Oh, SQLite. Okay, and then you'll see this next command, brew cleanup, that just gets rid of um, so when it, in, when it upgrades, it keeps the old version and then it upgrades to the new version. That way you can check and see that everything's working in your project. And if there's a problem, you can always roll it back. Um, but then if you do a cleanup, that, see that freed up 72 megs of disk space. So you always wanna make sure you do that. Okay, now this is the pretty cool part. Um, so the person that wrote this tutorial, they really like the Consolas um, font and so do I, that's what I'm using now over here. So these steps right here are the steps you'd run through to actually get it. So it's a Microsoft um, product or a Microsoft font. Um, so like it says right here, if you have Microsoft Office for Mac, um, you'll have cons Consolas with that. If not, you can run through these steps. Um, and actually, I'll just go ahead and do it just because um, it's a lot of steps and I don't think it'll hurt anything if I just install it again. So we're going to do brew install cab extract. I already have that installed. Then you would go change to your download directory. So I don't know if you guys know, here's another tip. Um, so I'm doing CD, that tilde, remember that means your home directory. So anywhere, if you're anywhere in this file system, so let's say, let's say it would go to CD music, iTunes. So right now you can see I'm in the music iTunes folder so if I type this command now CD that's basically saying go to my home directory and then go to the downloads folder and you'll see if you um, if you hit tab as long as you have enough characters for it to know what you're talking about so I just hit tab and it just completed that so now you can see I'm in the home folder and then the downloads folder bunch of stuff in there so now I'm gonna make a new directory same command as on Windows um, make a directory called the consolas so now you can see that the consolas directory is there and you see how the coloring works with my little setup any directories are blue and files are gray so now I'm going to CD into consolas, an empty directory. Now this CURL function, um, this will actually go out to this web address and it will retrieve the file that it finds there. So you just paste that in and then you'll see it's going to download it. Okay, so that's downloaded. Now you're going to, if I see, I've got PowerPoint Viewer. 
So we're going to do a cab extract, power, and you'll see that I can autocomplete that. Huh, I never run into this. I've never run into this problem before. So it's just because. Helps if you spell it right. Let me go back. CD. So actually I wanted to show you guys, you can actually You can actually do that. Okay. Cab extract PowerPoint viewer. Okay. So you can see that it extracted. And then you see there's this PP viewer cab. A dot cab is a cabinet file. It's like a zip file basically. Um, so now we're gonna do cab extract again on the PP viewer dot cab okay and now you see the last com command open consola star dot ttf true type front font so now it opens up this little window here and then you just click install font it'll open up this it'll it's just saying that I, I've already got those um, installed, so I'm just gonna cancel this. And that's it for that part. Um, then you can go ahead and delete out. So, oops, downloads, this consolas folder, you can delete that. Um, you can delete the uh, I guess everything was in there. Cool. All right, so this video is coming up to about 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop this one and uh, continue on with part two. Uh, we're going to be beautifying the terminal, which is making this terminal look just like mine does. So that'll be fun. See you guys in video two.